Let's talk more about the markets now with Joanne Feeney, partner and portfolio manager, Advisors Capital Management. Joanne, great to have you with us. Um, are you putting fresh money to work here ahead of earnings season? Oh, hey, Melissa. Yeah, you know, it's certainly a rocky time ahead of earnings season. We do expect uh, some bumps in the road, but we don't think that's a reason not to be fully invested in the equity market at this point. But we're pretty selective about the stocks that we you know, put together for our clients. And right now, it's a pretty good time to mix stocks that offer some appreciation potential with stocks that are paying a higher than average dividends to help get through this bumpy time. In, in deciding which stocks uh, are good, I mean, are you looking at valuation? Um, is there a magic number there relative to the S&P's valuation? You know, it really, right, it depends. We're sort of GARP investors. We're looking for growth at a reasonable price. And, you know, in the tech space, for example, you have a broad selection uh, on valuation metrics and on growth potential. But, you know, right now with uh, PCs, as we heard from uh, the Apple news and smartphones, obviously suffering a cyclical decline, this might not be a bad time to look at something like a Qualcomm, which, uh, you know, is, is facing those headwinds. But they're probably at a cyclical bottom in terms of their end market. So it's an attractively priced stock. It's below 15 times forward earnings, and it offers a higher than average dividend yield. Is Apple or Microsoft themselves, are they GARP? in your view, in, in Microsoft in particular, it's down pre-market. UBS is cutting estimates. It believes that Azure growth estimates on the street are too high going into the quarter. So there's some doubts about whether they're going to give the, the growth part of the GARP. You know, I, I can see how sort of investors with a shorter horizon might be nervous, right, about this quarter. Uh, there's a lot of news that's already out there. So I think investors have the right expectations that this quarter is going to be tough and guidance is likely to be conservative. But if you're an investor looking out two and three years and you look at the growth potential of these companies relative to their uh, cost, relative to earnings over that time period, then, yes, these are both GARP opportunities. You know, we don't think you should be as exposed as, say, the index is the market cap, you know, S&P, which is why we don't like index investing for our clients. You want to be careful about that exposure. But, yeah, I mean, over the multiple year period, these are two well-established companies with entrenched end markets and very deep moats. And these could be good opportunities for a long-term investor. Lenar, is that one that you've liked for a long time, or do you like it more with a little bit more clarity on where rates may be heading? Obviously, the higher mortgage rates were a headwind for all of the home builders. We've owned this for clients for a long time, uh, and it's done well over that long period. And right now, right, we're starting to see a turn in residential uh, building. And, you know, the, the highs of the mortgage rates have come down a little bit. Yes, we could see another increase in the Fed. We are expecting that in May. Uh, but ultimately, if you look out a year, right, rates are likely to be lower than where they are today. We're seeing the 10-year, right, down uh, below, what, 3.3%, 3.4%. And that, you know, portends well for mortgage rates. And ultimately, we have all these millennials who still need to get into their first homes. And Lenar specializes in first home purchases and one step up purchases. So they're right in the sweet spot of where demand is going to be maintained in the housing area for a long time to come. In terms of the backdrop for investing in the stocks that you like, Joanne, I'm curious, what, if any, role does the what's happening with banks and um, the future tightening of credit play in your outlook? You know, we're all trying to, to, to handicap whether we're going to get a recession and how much rates are going to rise. So the tensions in the bank industry certainly feed into that narrative. And, you know, what we have to do along with the Fed is wait to see how tight lending conditions have become and how much that might impinge upon economic activity. One thing we do know is there are a lot of companies out there with very strong balance sheets who have the cash, who can continue to invest in expansion of their uh, of their uh, manufacturing capabilities, their services, et cetera. So it isn't like we would expect to see a, a broader, deep recession should those lending conditions tighten a lot further. Uh, and it does, though, speak to the idea that you've got to be very selective in where you look for opportunities in this market. Look for the companies with the good balance sheets and the cash to be able to maintain their, that expansion. And look for the end markets where that expansion is likely to continue. Data centers, for example, the housing recovery is another example. Joanne, thank you. Joanne Feeney.